Greetings, this is Brother Eli with another episode of Bible Truth Revealed. Today's teaching is entitled, Where are the Edomites today? That is, where are the Edomites today? Most Hebrew Israelites have been duped into believing that the so-called white man is our brother Esau. This deception is based on a string of fallacies that are believed and regurgitated by many Hebrew Israelites without close examination. In my teaching entitled, Hebrew Israelites Lie About the White Man, I use the Holy Scriptures to demonstrate that it is impossible for the so-called white man to be our brother Esau. In today's teaching, I will expose another six fallacies about Esau that are believed by many Hebrew Israelites. At the end, I will answer the burning question, where are the Edomites or children of Esau today? The fallacies that I will be addressing in this teaching are as follows. 1. The Edomites, or children of Esau, no longer exist. 2. Esau was prophesied to rule the world. 3. The Dukes of England are Edomites. 4. The Jewish people are Edomites. 5. Esau did not literally live by the sword. And 6. Jeremiah chapter 25 Prove that the Arabs are not Edomites. Fallacy number one. The Edomites, or children of Esau, no longer exist. Obadiah, I will read verses 15, 17, and 21. That's Obadiah verses 15, 17, and 21. And I will be reading from the Brenton Septuagint translation. It reads thus, For the day of the Lord is near upon all the Gentiles. As thou hast done, so shall it be done to thee. Thy recompense shall be returned on thine own head. So this is talking about the day of destruction upon all the Gentiles, all the nations, all the heathen. This is not the day of the Lord upon a local community or upon a small group of people. This is worldwide upon all the Gentiles. So we know that it's talking about the last days, the final destruction. Verse 17. But on Mount Zion there shall be deliverance, and there shall be a sanctuary, and the house of Jacob shall take for an inheritance, meaning a possession, those that took them for an inheritance. So those nations that took the children of Israel as slaves will become slaves to the children of Israel. Verse 21. And they that escape shall come up from Mount Zion to take vengeance on the Mount of Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. Again, this is a latter-day prophecy when the day of the Lord comes upon all the Gentiles, all the heathen, all of the nations that enslaved the Israelites. The Israelites will enslave those nations and we will take vengeance on the Mount of Esau, on the Edomites, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. So because this is an end time prophecy about vengeance on the Gentiles or non-Israelites that destroyed and enslaved the Israelites and because we can clearly see that the Edomites are listed among these Gentiles upon whom the Israelites will take vengeance just before the Most High sets up his kingdom on the earth. It means that the Edomites still exist today. 
This could not happen if there were no Edomites today. Fallacy number two. Esau was prophesied to rule the world. Some people think that if the so-called white man is not Esau, we must expect another captivity. This is because the so-called white man is currently ruling the world, and some Hebrew Israelites mistakenly think that Esau was prophesied to rule the world. Therefore, they say he must be the so-called white man. This is one of the lies that is found in the 1611 King James Version of the Christian Bible. It is a book of deception that leads many unsuspecting Israelites astray. There are so many traps and snares in the King James Version of the Christian Bible that I have created an entire playlist exposing these lies. To learn more about this subtle deception, Please listen to my teaching entitled, The Truth About the King James Bible. That is, The Truth About the King James Bible. So let's go to 2 Ezra chapter 6, verses 7 to 9, in the 1611 KJV. That's 2 Ezra chapter 6, verses 7 to 9, and it says, then answered I and said, What shall be the parting asunder of the times? Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? So he's asking the question, How will we know when the world as we know it will end and the new world begins? Verse 8, And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, When Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau, for Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So this is saying that Esau will be ruling when this world ends. The Edomites will be ruling at the end of the world, and Jacob, which is the Israelites, will rule the world to come. Because of 2 Ezra chapter 6, many Hebrew Israelites are convinced that Esau's descendants are now ruling the world. However, this is part of the grand deception because 2 Ezra was purposefully written to lead the Israelites astray. For details of this fact, Please listen to my teaching entitled, Second Esdras is a Forgery. That is, Second Esdras is a Forgery. The next place that Hebrew Israelites use to convince themselves that Esau is ruling the world is Job chapter 9 verse 24. Job chapter 9 verse 24 in the King James Version of the Christian Bible says, The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? Context is key. Job said nothing about Esau or the Edomites. He was referring to the suffering of righteous men in general at the hands of unrighteous men in general. He was not suggesting that a particular race of people would rule the earth. Also, what Job said was not a prophecy. He was simply bemoaning the unfairness of life as he saw it in his own suffering. For a better understanding of Job chapter 9 verse 24, in context, please listen to my teaching entitled, Hebrew Israelites lie about the white man. That is, Hebrew Israelites lie about the white man. The third place that Hebrew Israelites go to argue that Esau would rule the world is Genesis chapter 27, verses 38 to 39. That's Genesis chapter 27, verses 38 to 39. 
And it says, And Esau said to his father, Hast thou only one blessing, father? Bless, I pray thee, me also, father. And Isaac being troubled, Esau cried aloud and wept. And Isaac his father answered and said to him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be of the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. Many Hebrew Israelites say, Thy dwelling shall be of the fatness of the earth means that Esau would rule the world. That couldn't be further from the truth. This blessing has nothing to do with ruling the world. It is simply a way of saying that Esau would be rich and successful. Jacob received the same blessing and more. Isaac pronounced riches and success on both of his sons as any good father would do. Let's examine the first part of Jacob's blessing for comparison. Genesis chapter 27, verses 26 to 28. Genesis chapter 27, verses 26 to 28 says, And Isaac his father said to him, Draw nigh to me and kiss me, son. And he drew nigh and kissed him, and smelled the smell of his garments, and blessed him, and said, Behold, the smell of my son is as the smell of an abundant field which the Lord has blessed. And may God give thee the dew of heaven and of the fatness of the earth, of the fatness of the earth, of the fatness of the earth, and abundance of corn and wine. We can clearly see that both Jacob and Esau were blessed with the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven. This simply means that they would be successful and wealthy. This blessing was fulfilled in their own lifetimes. We can find evidence of this in Genesis chapter 33. I will read Genesis chapter 33, verse 1, verses 4 to 5, and verses 8 to 11. That's Genesis chapter 33, verse 1, verses 4 to 5, and verses 8 to 11. It says, And Jacob lifted up his eyes and beheld, and lo, he saw his brother coming, and four hundred men with him. And Jacob divided the children to Leah and to Rachel, and the two handmaidens. Verse 4. And Esau ran on to meet him, and embraced him, and fell on his neck, and kissed him. And they both wept. And Esau looked up and saw the woman and the children, and said, What are these to thee? And he said, The children with which God has mercifully blessed thy servant. Verse 8. And he said, what are these things to thee, all these companies that I have met? And he said, That thy servant might find grace in thy sight, my lord. So Jacob had sent all his servants ahead of him, so they can speak good words to Esau before Esau met Jacob, because Jacob was afraid that Esau would kill him. When he saw the 400 men that were with Esau, he thought that Esau was coming to exact vengeance on him for stealing his blessing. Verse 9, And Esau said, I have much, my brother, keep thine own. Esau was filthy rich. He had of the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven. Verse 10. And Jacob said, If I have found grace in thy sight, receive the gifts through my hands. Therefore have I seen thy face, as if any one should see the face of God, and thou shalt be well pleased with me. Receive my blessings which I have brought thee, because God has had mercy on me, and I have all things. So Jacob was also filthy rich, and he constrained him, and he took them. To reiterate, both Jacob and Esau were rich 
and successful. They both received the blessing of the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven. We can find further evidence of this in Genesis chapter 36. Genesis chapter 36, I will read verses 6 to 8. That's Genesis chapter 36, verses 6 to 8, and it reads thus. And Esau took his wives, and his sons, and his daughters, and all the persons of his house, and all his possessions, and all his cattle, and all that he had got, and all things whatsoever he had acquired in the land of Canaan. And Esau went forth from the land of Canaan, from the face of his brother Jacob. For their substance was too great for them to dwell together. They were too rich to dwell together. There wasn't space enough for their wealth, for their riches. It continues. And the land of their sojourning could not bear them because of the abundance of their possessions. This is a fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven. Verse 8, And Esau dwelt in Mount Seir. Esau, he is Edom. So in this teaching, we're going to be using the words Esau and Edom interchangeably. Also, Edomites and Idumea, because these are all the same nation. The fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven that both Jacob and Esau received were so plentiful that they could no longer live together in the land of Canaan. Therefore, Esau left the land with his abundance of possessions and he and his household moved to Mount Seir. Nothing in Isaac's blessing to Esau suggests that he would rule the entire world. So it is a fallacy, a lie, that Esau would rule the entire world. Fallacy number three. The Dukes of England are Edomites. This is another lie that is based on the King James Version of the Christian Bible. First, I will expose the lie, then I will demonstrate that it must be rejected by honest truth seekers. 1 Chronicles chapter 1 verses 51 to 54. 1 Chronicles chapter 1 verses 51 to 54 in the KJV says, Hadad died also, and the dukes of Edom were Duke Timna, Duke Alia, Duke Jetheth, Duke Aholibama, Duke Elah, Duke Pinan, Duke Kenneth, Duke Teman, Duke Mibsa, Duke Magdiel, Duke Iram. These are the dukes of Edom. The Hebrew Israelite argument goes that there were dukes in Edom. And there are dukes in England, so the dukes in England must be Edomites. For those who have already listened to my teachings in which I prove that the King James Bible is a pit of deception, I will simply read the same verses from the Brenton Septuagint translation. The Septuagint dates back to 250 years before the invention of Christianity. So, just by comparing it to Christian Bibles, such as the KJV, we can easily expose the lies. First Chronicles chapter 1, I will now read verses 51 to 54 in the Brenton Septuagint translation. It says, The princes of Edom, Prince Thamna, Prince Golada, Prince Jether, Prince Elibamas, Prince Elas, Prince Finan, Prince Kenes, Prince Theman, Prince Babsa, Prince Magadiel, Prince Zaphuin. These are the princes of Edom. The KJV says that Edom had dukes, but the Septuagint proves that the rulers of Edom were not dukes, but 
princes. This means that the Duke's argument of the Hebrew Israelites does not stand up to scrutiny. Now let's read about the destruction of the princes, not dukes, of Esau. Isaiah chapter 34, verse 5 and verse 12. This is Isaiah chapter 34, verse 5 and verse 12 in the Brenton Septuagint translation. It says, My sword has been made drunk in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumea. So we know we are talking about Edom, the Edomites, the children of Esau, and with judgment upon the people doomed to destruction. Verse 12, her princes shall be no more. It does not say her dukes shall be no more, but her princes shall be no more. For her kings and her great men shall be destroyed. The Septuagint is consistent in saying that Edom had princes as opposed to dukes. Now let's see if the Christian KJV says that the dukes of Edom will be destroyed. Isaiah chapter 34 verse 5 and verse 12 in the King James Version of the Christian Bible. It says, For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumea and upon the people of my curse, to judgment. Verse 12. They shall call the nobles thereof to the kingdom, but none shall be there, and all her princes, her princes, her princes, not dukes, shall be nothing. This would have been a great place to reinforce the idea that Edom had dukes. But instead, the KJV itself admits that Edom had princes, not dukes. The Holy Scriptures give us no good reason to assume that the dukes of England are Edomites. Fallacy number four. The Jewish people are Edomites. Some Hebrew Israelites use Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 5 to suggest that the Jewish people are the Edomites. I will read Ezekiel chapter 36 and for the sake of context, I will read verses 1 to 2, verses 5 to 7, 13 to 14, and verses 16 to 20. That's Ezekiel chapter 36, verses 1 to 2, 5 to 7, 13 to 14 and 16 to 20. It says, And thou, son of man, prophesy to the mountains of Israel, and say to the mountains of Israel, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, Because the enemy has said against you, Aha! The old waste places are become a possession for us. Verse 5. Therefore, thus says the Lord, Verily, in the fire of my wrath have I spoken against the rest of the nations and against all I do mere, because they have appropriated my land to themselves for a possession with joy, disregarding the lives of the inhabitants to destroy it by plunder. So the Hebrew Israelite argument is because it says that they have appropriated or stolen or taken my land to themselves for a possession, it means that the Jewish people that are inhabiting the land must be the Edomites. They must be Idumia. Let's pay close attention to verse 5. It says, Therefore, thus says the Lord, Verily in the fire of my wrath have I spoken against the rest of the nations, the rest of the nations, and against all I do mere. 
the Jewish people could easily fit in the rest of the nations. This does not say that the Jewish people are the Edomites. It's the rest of the nations and Idumia that have appropriated the land for themselves. It's not only the Jewish people, it's the rest of the nations plus Idumia. So it's not accurate to take Idumia and say Idumia equals the Jewish people. What about the rest of the nations? Furthermore, the Jewish people appropriated the land in 1948. But that's not the first time that the land has been appropriated. Who is it that the Jewish people kicked out of the land in order to take it for themselves? That is who we should be looking at. Because we will discover later in this teaching that the Jewish people kicked out the Edomites from the land and took it for themselves. Verse 6 says, Therefore prophesy concerning the land of Israel, and say to the mountains and to the hills, and to the valleys and to the forests, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I have spoken in my jealousy and in my wrath, because ye have borne the reproaches of the heathen. Therefore I will lift up my hand against the nations that are round about you. They shall bear their reproach. Verse 13, Thus says the Lord God, Because they said to thee, Thou land devourest men, and hast been bereaved of thy nation. So realize this prophecy is to the land of Israel, because the nations round about the land of Israel say that the land of Israel devourest men. And is bereaved of its nation. Which means that the people in the land of Israel are not the Israelites. Those have been kicked out. The land is bereaved of the original Israelites. Verse 14. Therefore thou shalt no more devour men. And thou shalt no more bereave thy nation saith the Lord God. There's a time is coming when the land of Israel would no longer bereave or mourn for the true Israelites because we are going home. Verse 16, And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, the house of Israel dwelt upon their land and defiled it by their way, and with their idols, and with their uncleannesses, and their way was before me like the uncleanness of a removed woman. So it's because of sin and idolatry that the Most High punished the Israelites and removed us from our land. Verse 18. So I poured out my wrath upon them and I dispersed them among the nations and utterly scattered them to the countries. So the true Israelites are not in the land of Israel. We are dispersed among the nations. We are scattered scattered to the countries. It continues, I judged them according to their way and according to their sin. And they went in among the nations among which they went, and they profaned my holy name. While it was said of them, These are the people of the Lord, and they came forth out of his land. So we know that the Jewish people who are in the land of Israel are not the Israelites because the Israelites are dispersed among the nations. We are scattered through the countries because of our sins, because we broke the commandments of the Most High God, because of our idolatry, but also the Jewish people who are in the land are not the Edomites. They kicked the Edomites out of the land and kept the land for themselves. Because when the Israelites were removed, the Edomites said, Aha, now we can take the land. And they went into the land of Israel. They were later removed or kicked out by the Jewish 
people. But there's nothing in Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 5 or otherwise that says that the Jewish people are Edomites. Fallacy number 5. Esau did not literally live by the sword. Genesis chapter 27, I will read verse 40. That's Genesis chapter 27 verse 40 and it says, And thou shalt live by thy sword, and shalt serve thy brother, and there shall be a time when thou shalt break and loosen his yoke from off thy neck. Many Hebrew Israelites say that Isaac did not literally mean that Esau would live by the sword. They say that the word sword just means weapons in general. Yet this is easily disproven. In Genesis chapter 27, the same chapter in which Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau, he used the word for weapons. Therefore, if he meant that Esau would live by weapons in general, he would have said so. Let's look at Genesis chapter 27, verses 3 to 4, along with verse 40, so I can make this point. Genesis chapter 27, verses 3 to 4, and verse 40. It says, Now then, take thy weapons, thy weapons, thy weapons, both thy quiver and thy bow, and go into the plain and get me venison, and make me meats as I like them, and bring them to me that I may eat, that my soul may bless thee before I die. Verse 40, and thou shalt live by thy sword. He could have easily said, thou shalt live by thy weapons, because he only just said, go and get your weapons. And he could have said, thou shalt live by thy quiver and thy bow, because he named them specifically. But here he's saying to his son, you shall literally live by your sword. That's why I'm particular particularly naming the sword, and thou shalt live by thy sword. So it is a fallacy to think that Isaac did not literally mean that his son Esau would literally live by the sword. Fallacy number six. Jeremiah chapter 25 proves that the Arabs are not Edomites. Some misguided Bible teachers claim that because Jeremiah chapter 25 lists Edom and Arabia as separate nations, they cannot be the same people. Let's read Jeremiah 25 in the Christian KJV so we can better understand this fallacy. This is Jeremiah chapter 25 verses 21 to 24 in the King James Version of the Christian Bible. Edom, and Moab, and the children of Ammon, and all the kings of Tyrus, and all the kings of Zidon, and the kings of the Isles which are beyond the sea, Dedan, and Tamar, and Boz, and all that are in the utmost corners, and all the kings of Arabia, and all of the kings of the mingled people that dwell in the desert. So this has listed Edom separate to Arabia. But those of us who are fully aware that the KJV is a pack of lies should know better than to be convinced by what we have just read. The KJV is a Christian Bible that is used to create confusion in the minds of our people. It is a Christian light Bible of choice and that should come as no surprise because Christian lights are just Christians in fringes. However, there are Israelites who claim to serve the Most High only, yet they still rely on Christian Bibles such as the 1611 KJV. That is a downright shame. I pray that the Most High opens their eyes so they can find themselves a Bible that is both reliable and consistent. 
not like the 1611 KJV. Now let's read the Brenton Septuagint translation to discover what this passage actually said before the Christians got their grubby hands on it. Jeremiah chapter 25 in the KJV is chapter 32 in the Septuagint. So I will read Jeremiah chapter 32 verses 21 to 27 in the Brenton Septuagint translation. It says, And Idumia, that's Edom, and the land of Moab, and the children of Ammon, and the kings of Tyre, and the kings of Sidon, and the kings in the country beyond the sea, and Dedan and Thamon and Ross, and everyone that is shaved round about the face. Verse 24. And all the mingled people lodging in the wilderness. Notice this says nothing about the kings of Arabia. Again, and all the mingled people lodging in the wilderness. And I will keep reading so you can see that this passage does not mention the Arabians even once. Verse 25. And all the kings of Elam, and all the kings of the Persians, and all the kings from the north, the far and the near, each one with his brother, and all the kingdoms which are on the face of the earth. And thou shalt say to them, Thus said the Lord Almighty, Drink ye, be ye drunken, and ye shall vomit, and shall fall, and shall in no wise rise, because of the sword which I send among you. So the Most High will destroy all these nations. It mentions Idumia, which is Edom, but there's no mention of Arabia. This passage says nothing about the Arabs. However, to trick unsuspecting truth seekers into believing that it is impossible for the Arabs to be Edomites. The oppressor snuck those few words into the text of Christian Bibles such as the 1611 KJV. This is yet another example of why we must choose our Bible carefully. Throw the KJV in the trash and get a Bible that has not been written to deceive the masses. Now we are on to the big question. Where are the Edomites today? The answer to this question is much simpler than most Hebrew Israelites care to admit. If we want to find Edomites, the best place to search is in Edom. To demonstrate my point, consider the following. If we want to find Chinese people, the best place to search is in China. Of course, there are Chinese people all around the world, but there are more Chinese people in China than anywhere else on earth. In the same way, the best place to find Indians is in India. Although there are Indians all around the world, there is a greater concentration of Indians in India than anywhere else. This is quite straightforward. Once you rid yourself of the fallacy that Esau was prophesied to rule the world, and you accept that the so-called white man is not Esau our brother, it is easier to admit that the best place to search for Edomites is in Edom. Some Hebrew Israelites search for Edomites everywhere except Edom. It seems like they believe that the Edomites were scattered all throughout the earth, just like the Israelites. However, the Most High never said that he would scatter the Edomites throughout the earth. He gave them the land of Edom for an inheritance. And he never scattered them in the way that he did with the Israelites. Therefore, although some Edomites have been displaced and others have emigrated to other countries, the land of Edom is still the best 
place to search for Edomites today. Malachi chapter 1 verses 1 to 4 proves this point. Malachi chapter 1 verses 1 to 4 reads thus, The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by the hand of his messenger. Lay it, I pray you, to heart. I have loved you, says the Lord. And ye said, Wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, says the Lord? Yet I loved Jacob, and hated Esau, and laid waste his borders, and made his heritage, that's Edom, as the dwellings of the wilderness. Because one will say, I do mere has been overthrown, but let us return and rebuild the desolate places. Thus says the Lord Almighty, they shall build, but I will throw down. And they shall be called the borders of wickedness, and the people against whom the Lord has set himself forever. So whenever Edom or Idumia is destroyed, the Edomites return and rebuild the desolate places. They do not forsake their heritage. Therefore, most Edomites are still in Edom, just like most Chinese people are still in China, and most Indians are still in India. The book of Obadiah, verses 1 to 3, tells us that the Edomites are now a small group of people. Obadiah verses 1 to 3 reads thus. The vision of Obdius, that's Obadiah. Thus says the Lord God to Idumia, I have heard a report from the Lord, and he has sent forth a message to the nations. So the Most High issued a message to the nations, to the heathen, saying, Arise ye, and let us rise up against her to war. The Most High sent the nations round about Idumia to war against Idumia. Verse 3. Behold, I, that's the Most High, have made thee small among the Gentiles. Thou art greatly dishonored. Edomites are a small people who have been greatly dishonored. The pride of thine heart has elated thee, dwelling as thou dost in the holes of the rocks, as one that exalts his habitation, saying in his heart, Who will bring me down to the ground? So the Most High sent other nations against Edom to war against her. Most Edomites were slaughtered, and only a few of them remain. This is why it says, I have made the small among the Gentiles. Edom has been greatly dishonored. It was once a powerful nation that dwelt in Mount Seir. The Edomites trusted in their stronghold and thought that they could never be defeated. The pride of their heart deceived them, but now they are so insignificant that most people don't even know that they still exist. Now let's go to Jeremiah chapter 30. Jeremiah chapter 30 verses 1 to 2 is chapter 49 verses 7 to 9 in the KJV. So I'm reading Jeremiah chapter 30 verses 1 to 2. In the Brenton Septuagint translation, which is Jeremiah chapter 49 verses 7 to 9 in the KJV. And it helps to answer the question, where is Edom today? It says, Concerning Idumia, thus says the Lord, there is no longer wisdom in Thaman. Counsel has perished from the wise ones. Their wisdom is gone. Their place has been deceived. Dig deep for a dwelling, ye that inhabit Dedam, for he has wrought grievously. I brought trouble upon him in the time at which I visited him. 
So we've just heard that in Idumea, there's a place called Thaman and there's a place called Dedam. Isaiah chapter 34 verse 6 tells of another place in Idumea. Isaiah chapter 34 verse 6 says, The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is glutted with fat, with the blood of goats and lambs, and with the, and with the fat of goats and rams. For the Lord has a sacrifice in Bosor. Bosor is also called Bozra, and a great slaughter in Idumea. So Taman, Dedan, and Bozra are all places in the land of Idumea or Edom. Although the names of some of these places have been changed, a quick internet search reveals that they are in and around the landmass now referred to as Saudi Arabia. On www.saudiarabiatourismguide.com, there is an article entitled Dedan, one of the oldest kingdoms of Arabia. So this confirms that Edom is in the place that is now called Arabia. There is a quote that says, Dedan is an ancient oasis city that was once the capital of one of the oldest kingdoms of Arabia, along with Tema. So the biblical land of Edom is in modern-day Saudi Arabia. Therefore, the best place to search for Edomites today is in modern-day Saudi Arabia. We've already established that Esau was told that he would live by the sword. To this very day, the inhabitants of Edom continue to live by the sword. The sword is a vital part of the culture of Saudi Arabia. Additionally, the country is notorious for executing criminals by beheading them with the sword. On www.amnesty.org, which is the website of Amnesty International, there is an article entitled, Saudi Arabia, 100 people executed as authorities continue relentless killing spree. Quote 1 says this, Saudi Arabia is one of the world's top executioners. Amnesty International has documented numerous cases in which the authorities have sentenced people to death for anything from a few tweets to drug-related offenses following grossly unfair trials that fell far short of international human rights standards. In Edom, the sword is the answer to most offenses. Amnesty International is powerless to do anything about what they call the relentless killing spree in Edom because Esau lives by the sword and that will never change. Quote number two says, in 2022, Saudi Arabia executed 196 people, the highest annual number of executions that Amnesty International has recorded in the country in the last 30 years. The number of executions in 2022 is three times higher than the number of executions carried out in 2021 and at least seven times higher than the figure for 2020. As we can see, Edom is literally ruled by the sword and the executions are increasing significantly year on year rather than decreasing. So we know 
that the best place to search for Edomites is in Edom. And we also recognize that the inhabitants of Edom continue to live by the sword to this very day. This confirms that we are looking in the right place to find the Edomites today. Another defining characteristic of the descendants of Esau is that they are much hairier than the average person. When Esau was born, he was covered with so much hair that his parents named him Hairy. The name Esau literally means Hairy. This was very clearly explained in my teaching entitled, Hebrew Israelites Lie About the White Man. So I encourage you to listen to the teaching for more details. Are the so-called Arabs hairier than average? All it takes is a quick Google search to find the answer to this question. It is a resounding yes, but I'll let you research that for yourself. The Edomites are a people of color that still live in the land of Edom to this very day. The land of Edom was conquered by the so-called white man who slaughtered and raped the original Edomites and established the caste system of white supremacy. This is why in Saudi Arabia, the lighter your skin color, the higher your perceived value. This is the foundation of the caste system that the so-called white man implemented throughout the world. For details of how the so-called white man slaughtered and raped the original civilizations of the world and stole their cultures, please listen to my teaching entitled The Truth About the Children of Lucifer. That is the truth about the children of Lucifer. In conclusion, the Edomites are a people of color, most of whom continue to live in the land of Edom today. Like their forefather Esau, they are hairier than average, and for thousands of years they have lived by the sword. The whited out Arabs who currently rule the land of Edom are Edomitish bastards who have been corrupted by the cursed seed of Lucifer. The true Edomites are a small group of people compared to the heathen around them. They were severely punished for the evils they committed against the Israelites and they will continue to exist until the Israelites exact vengeance on them when the Most High returns to set up his kingdom. And with that I say, Shalom.